Hi, I'm Nick Simmons. I'm the Head of History here at Hearts in Essex. Uh, I'm here with Ellie Mason, here to talk about the benefits of A-level history. Um, I suppose one of the first important questions that you're going to have is, why study history? Um, I really believe in that quite cliched and cheesy thing about if we study history, we're not going to make the same mistakes as people in the past have made. Um, but it's also more than that. History is not just the study of mistakes and things that have gone wrong, although a lot of it is. Um, history is also the, really the study of decisions. Um, and so what history teaches us is how to make decisions, how to carefully evaluate evidence, how to weigh up a range of options, um, and how to come to really strong conclusions based on the hard work we've put into it. So another really important question is why you should study history with us. Um, and I suppose one of the first reasons uh, for that is that we're successful. Um, so for the last four years, the department have had an ALPS score of three, which means that our students are broadly achieving the challenging target grades they're set. Um, the last time there were exams in 2019, 85% of our students got a B or better. Um, and for the last four years, a third of our students have got an A star or an A. So, yeah, like I said, we're successful and our students are successful as well. Um, a lot of that's down to my department. Uh, so there's myself, Nick Simmons, um, there's also Mr Noble, who's the, also the head of politics and the head of Year 11. Mrs Kirkham is one of the head teachers here. And there's Mr Manners and Mr Stewart as well. Um, and they are a dedicated, intelligent, hard-working group of teachers and, and historians. Um, everything we do is about making sure our students are prepared for exams and are enjoying history. We put a lot of work into making sure our lessons are engaging and supporting our students not just through the history and learning new stuff, um, but through learning how to be successful assessments as well, because that's how you're going to be tested at the end of the day. Um, Ellie's going to talk now a bit about the transition from Year 11 to Year 12. I think when you transfer from GCSE to A-level history, the jump is more the amount of time you're going to have to spend outside of lessons consolidating your learning. So in class you'll go through and you'll make notes, but you won't always have written everything down, there's a lot of discussion. So when you get home you're going to have to be prepared to do notes from the textbook and there will be a lot more essays than there were at GCSE. But if you enjoy those things and you don't mind putting effort in, I think the jump is definitely manageable. So an important thing to think about for you as well is going to be the options that we study here. So the four units that we study. Um, there's two in year 12 and there's two in year 13. And I'm going to talk through them in a bit more detail in a bit. But just to set it out quickly for you. In year 12 you study the Wars of the Roses and the Cold War in Asia. Um, and in year 13 you study Rebellion and Disorder in Tudor England and the Civil Rights Movement. Um, we follow OCR, the A-level course because they give us a good choice of options, so we're able to study a broad range of history in terms of chronology and geography. So we study history from 1445 up to the 1980s, and we look at history in England, in Asia, and America. Um, OCR also, their assessments, I think, are good history. They are challenging, but they ask really pertinent questions and push our students to be successful. Um, Ellie, what did you find challenging about those assessments? I think on the Wars of the Roses exam, there's a 25 mark essay on sources, and that is quite challenging because there's four sources you haven't seen before, and you have to use the evidence you've learned to evaluate those sources, which when you've got a limited amount of time, reading all the sources, going through them, and then picking out the correct evidence to use can be challenging. And with the Cold War in Asia, there's such a wide range of content because it spans such a large time period that when you get to the exam, and it's short, it's only an hour long that exam, trying to remember everything and write it in the correct way can sometimes be a bit like, don't rush, don't do it too fast. I think that brings up a really good point about like, the challenges of exams in history in general. Like The test is, do you know lots and lots of stuff? But you're not going to have to use lots and lots of that stuff, so we're going to have to try and fill your head with huge amounts of information. But you're going to use a very small amount in the exam um, and put it down on paper. Um, so let me talk through those options in a bit more detail. Um, the Wars of the Roses in Year 12 is what Game of Thrones is based on, whether or not you've watched it. Um, it is a number of civil wars and fairly brutal battles taking place in kind of late medieval history, all centred around this fairly 
incompetent King Henry VI and the nobility around him trying to manipulate him and control the country. Um, the throne changes hands five times in the space of our course um, and the high politics of the time really govern what is going on in England and, and give us a really interesting thing to look at. The Cold War in Asia um, shifts focus away from Europe. Um, the Cold War in Europe is a, is a really popular historical topic at schools and outside of schools as well. Um, but rather than looking at that ideological conflict between America and Russia, East and West, and that focus on Germany, we look at what's happening in Asia instead. So the rise of communism in China, uh, the Korean and Vietnam wars, um, and America and Russia's role in what's happening in those countries. Those Asian countries have got very unique histories that bring a very different response to the Cold War and informs us a lot about what's going on um, in those countries at the moment. Um, Ellie, what did you find the most interesting parts of the Year 12 course? I think with the Wars of the Roses, it's very intriguing because it, throughout lower school you learn a lot about the Tudors and the Wars of the Roses basically outlines how the Tudors came to rule England. So it was very interesting to finally learn how Henry VII came to be king because you always hear that he had a very weak claim and you finally learn why that happened. And with the Cold War in Asia, I think it's an area of the world that you don't really study in history. I'd never studied in history before. And because the events are so current, you can clearly see the link between the events of the Cold War and modern politics now. Thank you. Um, so in year 13, uh, the way that we study history changes. In year 12, it's very much a chronological overview of these, of these two courses, but in year 13 we switched to a more thematic way of learning. So the Tudor Rebellions course that I teach in year 13 um, is very different. Tudor England is seen as you know, this golden age of English history. You know, the, the stability of Henry VIII and Elizabeth um, sets the scene for what the kind of country that Britain's going to become later on. Um, in reality, they face rebellion and disorder throughout the 120 years of, um, of Tudor uh, control of the country. Um, we focused on 20 rebellions throughout the period. Um, but rather than learning about them one at a time, we are learning about all 20, every single lesson, from the very first lesson. Um, and so we're looking at the causes of these 20 rebellions. And like I said, that thematic way of learning about history is very different um, and, and quite challenging at the start of year 13. But it gives our students a much stronger depth of analysis and range of skills to use. Uh, the last part of I-Level course is the Civil Rights Movement. Um, the Civil Rights Movement is taught to the students at the start of Year 13, but fairly soon in Year 13 the students have to choose a part of it that they find really interesting, and they do independent research and, and write a, a coursework essay on it of about 4,000 4, words. Um, it's a very different way of studying, again, and much similar to what a student might experience at university. Um, have you chosen an essay subject yet? I uh, have. I'm doing my essay on the role of the Supreme Court and how Supreme Court rulings affected the progression and regression of civil rights in America. Why did you choose that question? I think I'm interested in the law for my future and also it's quite interesting to see how the American political system puts, puts so much emphasis on the Supreme Court but how little effect it actually has on improving civil rights in America. And how are you finding the like the one to one tutorial nature? I think I think that's very it's very good and it's very useful because if you have a question or a query or something you want to understand, being one on one with your teacher who knows or Mrs Kirkham who teaches it knows all very like loads about civil rights. So if you have a question for her, she'll be able to tell you about it or she'll find something to tell you about it. And it's so. Is, is very like interesting and it encourages you to carry on with your work and keep putting a lot of effort in. So the last question I suppose is what can you do with A-level history or what can you do with a history degree? Um, and that's a, both an easy and a hard question. Um, the skills that history gives you are, are broad um, and valuable in a huge range of different professions that you might go and do uh, or careers that you might do after school. Um, so what does history teach you? At its core, history teaches you to look at really complicated information, uh, compare it to other information, look for patterns, um, analyse it, 
um, and then draw conclusions based on it, you know, write a report on it. And so that skill of looking at information, analysing it and writing about it is useful in a really wide range of jobs. If you're interested in uh, the law or retail or education um, or politics, the, then it's going to be really, really supportive for you. Um, but those skills are, are valuable in, in a lot more than just that. Um, have you made decisions about what you're doing after school? Um, I'm hoping to go to university and study history and then after that I'm going to take a law conversion course and hopefully become a barrister. So.